The VO meter, measuring your voiceover progress. Okay, everybody, welcome to the inaugural edition of the VO meter podcast, measuring your voiceover career progress. I'm your host, Paul Stefano, and joining me is co host, Sean Daly. Hey, everybody, how are you doing? Oh, wait, that's why they so, can't respond. So, this is the inaugural <laughs> version. Inaugural, inaugural, inaugural. I, I, I usually say inaugural personally, but like. <laughs> I like to go with inaugural. 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 Maybe it's an East Coast thing. Maybe. <laughs> Capital is here on the East Coast, so that's what I'm going with. I uh, gotcha. So, in this inaugural edition of the podcast, I should explain a little bit about the motivation. So, when I started out, I received a lot of help from the great industry pros all around the country and even the world. And though that period of time was only about one year ago, I feel like I've progressed greatly and I wanted to do something to give back to give the community that has helped me so much in getting started. So I thought, why not start a podcast and get out the information about the pitfalls and things you want to try to avoid when you're first getting started as a quote unquote newbie. Mm. I hate that word and I promise it's the last time I'll use it. He's but gonna it break does that get the promise. point across pretty nicely. <laughs> How do you feel about that word? Well, I mean, yeah, it's it's got all sorts of preconceptions coming with it. It's, um, I mean, like you hear amateur or novice, and you have to start somewhere. I mean, people have, like, we, voiceover is really interesting in that we're all really varied in where we're coming from. Like, literally every occupation, depending on if you're doing part-time or full-time, people come from all around. So you might be a doctor and doing voiceover part-time or... Uh, teacher is a really popular job to be moving from. But it's depending on what your prior experience is, there, for example, say an audio engineer or even a talent agent, you might have a lot more um, applicable knowledge when you come into this field. So you're absolutely right. In newbie, even though it does have all of this negative um, preconceptions with it, it's not always an accurate descriptor of where you're really at when you get started. So this brings up a good point. When do you feel comfortable sort of giving advice to to those that may be just starting out and don't have really any experience in a related field? Oh, you're asking me now. So, yeah. okay, well, that's the thing is that, um, and, and I'll say right now, like Paul and I are, um, what, we're kind of in the trenches, voice actors. We don't have as much experience as people who have been doing it for decades. I've been doing it for about three years now. Paul's been doing it for a little over one. But um, everyone goes through this sort of initial, I uh, almost want to call it a hazing phase. Like, Yeah, <laughs> and, describe it. Uh, absolutely. Because, I mean, everyone comes in because they're passionate about VO. Hopefully, hopefully you're not just like, I just want to make some quick bucks doing something easy because it's not. And it's not it's not quick and it's not easy at all. Um, I actually had a great conversation with uh, with this one girl who is who's a talented actress. And she's like, I'd really like to start doing voice work. Um, can you could you give me some advice? And I did. I was like, well, I've been doing this for about three years and I'm more like I'm, I'm definitely more successful now than any time previous. And she's like, oh, that's really quick. And I loved that. She said that because most people are like three years. That's so long. And like she she had a very realistic expectation about how long it would take to get a foothold and start making a return on your investment. And and that's another thing is like it's almost it's almost quarterly, if not more often. I see it like if you spend enough time on Facebook in the different voiceover groups, you'll see just like, all right, I'm um, I put together a demo. Can I uh, get some feedback on it? And then it'll just get torn apart because people are recording it on their phone or on a USB mic and they don't have a treated space and 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 they're just they don't have a realistic idea of what it takes. And I'll admit it's discouraging to hear like, oh, you're not ready. You need training. You need to invest in yourself, especially if you're coming from a place of no money. But. 
that is the reality of it. And but the the truth is, is there are ways to like to make incremental progress. So you might have to like, well, obviously, you have to learn to budget. And there are plenty of affordable uh, there's affordable recording solutions. You might even be able to work out um, an agreement with a coach where you're doing a payment plan as opposed to everything up front. And, like there are ways around these issues. If you want to do this, you will find a way instead of finding excuses. Yeah, that's a great point. And most importantly, there's there's a right way to do it and a wrong way to do it, or at least writer ways to do it. Absolutely. <laughs> I know, and, worry, but it sounds funny. I, I, and that's why we're here, basically, to try and help people avoid those huge pitfalls that are there in front of every new person so they can avoid those mistakes. Absolutely. Because you see the same questions being asked over and over and over again. And everyone is going to have the same questions. But the problem is, is or what will really separate you from the start is if you realize that it's been asked and the answer is out there if you look for it. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a lot of times where the frustration comes from, from people who have been doing, people who have been in the business for a long time. Absolutely. They've seen that question so many times that they just can't stomach answering it again in the same way. Absolutely. Like, I mean, I've made templates for people who ask these questions. And then I'm like, all right, you're set for a year. Okay. Don't ask anything <laughs> else. I have just given you this boatload of resources that I spent the time do it finding myself at, for free. And it, it's, I mean, you'll, you'll find like, I mean, everyone I talk to, because like now I'm, I'm, I'm back with my family and my friends and they're like, for them, I'm their their window into this crazy VO world. And they're like, I mean, I, I went to school with a lot of actors and stuff like that. And they're like, wow, this community is so much more supportive and less cutthroat than the stage or theater, or I mean, the stage or on camera acting communities that I've, uh, the sort of stereotypes that we, we think of when we think like the entertainment industry. And they are. And I mean, VO people are incredibly generous um, to a fault. And the thing is, is we, we, we run out of patience <laughs> with people who aren't willing to do the work because most of us have put a lot of work into this, a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of money. And we feel a little shortchanged by someone who's trying to shortcut. I mean, that's definitely part of it, but... I don't necessarily think everyone is trying to shortcut. Certainly there are people that do that. But it's it's just, it's heartbreaking, really, is the word I would use. When you see somebody put out a demo that they, you know they recorded in their bedroom with, with an untreated space, and they just get blasted by everybody who they put it out to. <laughs> Absolutely. And you just and think, if only they had asked me first, I would have helped them. <laughs> no, no, that's a great point. And, and when I say... Um... That that's a big point too. Is it's it's usually innocuous. It's not like they are. I mean, they're they're not trying to hurt anyone. Like they're just trying to realize a dream for the most part. And you're right. They will get blown apart. And this is um, not everyone is willing to kind of give them that compliment sandwich. You know, like because yeah. uh, I mean, you're right. Because some people have just just have lost the patience for it completely. And others are just jaded because they see it over and over and over again. And it's like nobody, like, I don't know, people will will jump onto a Facebook group. And like I said, they'll put that demo out right after that. And it was like, Facebook archives everything. If you have a question or if you have a situation before you post, that's the thing is that nobody looks these things up before they post. Um, yeah, internet research is, it's, ironically, is a lost art. It's more, it's easier than ever with the technology we have, but actually doing research is a completely lost art on the youth of today. <laughs> Absolutely. And it's, it's not, I mean, there are more resources available now than ever before. And I'm just like, I'm flabbergasted <laughs> that people can't find them on their own. So this brings up a, uh, a good segue. I wanted to talk about some of the pitfalls that you and I have experienced. Although I'm here you know, preaching, you need to do your research and ask for help, 
I've definitely done some of the stupid things myself. <laughs> oh, me too. Um, so, uh, so you, you can start or I'll start, but I definitely have a, a, a few I'd like to go over. Okay, so I think my biggest problem so far has been um, when you start getting clients and your your workload starts to increase, you may not, like since a lot of this is new, you, you're you unprepared in certain regards. So like, for example, you might have a project that you've never done before and you don't know how what rate to give or... Um, What's happened to me is that I've I've underbid myself before I had a true understanding of how much work was involved. I remember they said uh, before they sent me a script, they're like, all right, this is for an audio textbook. It should be about 30, 40 minutes of audio. Um, and then so I, I gave them like an hourly rate for an audio book. And I was like, all right, this is great. And then that was before I realized that they wanted multiple actors and then... Uh, and sound effects and music Ooh. and all of these other things. And I'm like, all right, there goes your entire budget. I lost money on that book. And I um, I wasn't able to complete it in a timely manner because I had no experience doing a lot of that stuff. And then and I had um, and we had that sort of back and forth where I'm like, all right, how's this? Like, oh, we want more like we want more differentiation between the characters and we don't just want you to do a different voice. We want another actor. Oh, boy. Yeah. So so that was a big learning experience. And and it's funny, like, I mean, there are some things you're you'll handle better than others. But the truth is, if you make these mistakes, it, you can't it's, it's not life or death. You might have lost a client, but I mean, you've learned a whole new skill set and you just have to keep going and like charge accordingly, um, outsource when possible, charge for that. And um, just ask uh, just ask all of these things ahead of time. So recently uh, I do this every couple of months. So there's a wonderful book called Making Money in Your PJs by uh-huh. <laughs> by voiceover talent Paul Strequerda. So he's, uh, I believe he lives in Pennsylvania. He's... Eastern uh, Pennsylvania. Yes. He, he actually lives right around the corner from the house my dad grew up in, I recently found out. Oh, wow. Um, and I actually had a chance to talk to him at a recent networking event. Very, very nice guy. He made fun of my beer because uh, <laughs> I, <laughs> I like um, I like Belgians. And uh, I was drinking a Blue Moon. Wait, which... are you talking about beer still? Yeah, yes, I've never. <laughs> I... <laughs> so, um, oh yeah. um, I studied abroad or two, but anyways, <laughs> very nice. Um, anyways, uh, yes, we're talking like Belgian white beers and stuff like that. So I love Blue Moon, and it's an American beer. But he's like, oh yes, the po- or the poor man's Hochgarten, and because he's from. Um, he's from the Netherlands, so he would like, of course, prefer the European beers. And uh, I was like, "That's a good one, by the way. I'm a big fan of that one. I love Hogarden. It's so refreshing." And um, but, anyways, so I was like, "Oh, and and this is this is being like embarrassed by one of your VO idols, by the way. Like, I've been following him for four years, and then the first thing he says to me is like, I hate your beer. Like, <laughs> no. Um, by the way, can we still do an interview later, Paul? I'm sorry, <laughs> but." Um, I just joked back. I was like, well, Whole Garden doesn't come in cans. So, um, there you go. And he's fine. He's just like, just breaking the ice. But, um, but, anyways, I'm rereading this book and he's all about providing an excellent service and being prepared by asking those questions ahead of time. And I'm just like, oh God, I'm fa- like, I've made this mistake and that mistake and la 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 la. And, but I mean, it's still like I feel like some t- there there are some mistakes you have to make. You know, you can only experience only goes so far. Like yeah, so those are all good ones. Uh, t- talk about some of your challenges, Paul. So one that we talked about already was the self-produced demo, and I was totally guilty of this. I started, <laughs> I think, looking for voiceover work on a Monday when I when I finally decided to put myself out there. So I decided I'm going to do it all at once. So I created a website. I created some self-produced demos. And I think that Tuesday night, a full 24 hours later, I decided to put myself out to the world, publish my website, sent my, my self-produced demos to a bunch of voiceover communities. 
And guess what happened? Absolutely destroyed. The sound is terrible. Have you ever been in front of a microphone before? Do you have teeth? <laughs> every, possible, oh, no. <laughs> every possible insult and, and criticism in no way constructive for the most part. And I thought, wow, what have I gotten myself into? So luckily, I had some guidance and, and took a step back and followed that guidance to immediately get thee to a coach. And that's when I decided that I needed to pull down those demos, which I did. Also advice from, from some other industry pros. And I pulled down those demos, got some coaching, and didn't put out anything at all until I'd finished at least the introductory program at the, with the fine folks at Edge Studio. So once they produced my demo and, and gave me their Edge Studio approved badge, meaning that I had completed at least enough introductory training to produce a halfway decent demo, then I put it out there and started sending it to people. So that was a big one. Mm -hmm. And it's it's uh, it's a tough spoon to swallow. Absolutely. I mean, some people are just like, what do you mean? I'm not good enough. And it's um, I mean, I, I deal with this all the time. Like I recently one of my main gigs is sort of this English education website where you do these monthly narrations. And one of our students was like, now, keep in mind, they've actually seen me do interviews with the um with the owner of the site, so they know what I really sound like. But when I talk, or at least, like, it's still, I don't know, I, um, <laughs> sometimes I like to get a little sing-songy, I like to excite and up, spice up the words, you know, add a little mm -hmm. secret sauce. And they're like, why, why doesn't he sound normal when he narrates? I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> I've been doing this for three years now, and I've just, like, dug myself into this habit hole and so yesterday I was working on that. I'm like, all right, I'm forcing myself to relax, as contradictory as that sounds. But it, it created something that was a lot more like what I'm talking to right now. Granted, there are times when you will have a script and they will straight up tell you, all right, make this boring script sing. You know, like when you have that kind of permission, you can just go balls to the wall and like and have fun with it. But... The thing is, is that in in every area of voiceover, nobody wants to sound wants you to sound like you're reading. You're just talking, and we forget how hard that is. I mean, right now I'm in a closet staring at a microphone, pretending that I'm talking to well, talking to Paul and talking to you, but. I, this is how I sound. This is pretty much how I talk to anyone. So that's one of the reasons I love podcasts is because you have that uh, like that assumption of an audience, and it's that much easier to talk to people. But well, hopefully there's an audience. Well, that hopefully remains to be seen. That remains to be seen. <laughs> remains to be heard. Um, but absolutely, that's the thing. Is like even though, um, like even from us, take what we have with a grain of salt because we're still learning. And we're only trying to provide advice to help you. So, yeah, indeed. Mm -hmm. So another another pitfall that I came across was microphone choice, <laughs> and more accurately, microphone envy, mm -hmm. or the acronym GAS that we like to use, which stands for Gear Acquisition Syndrome. It never goes away. <laughs> it doesn't, unfortunately, but it's especially <laughs> bad when you're first starting because you're looking at all these stores and advice from people that tell you this is the best microphone you need to use this one's good for voiceover this one's good for podcasts and i'm here to tell you that for the most part it doesn't matter i've purchased and sold no less than 22 mics in a one year period oh my god <laughs> and the one that i'm using now is i think the third mic i purchased thankfully i, I held on to one that works and it's always worked, and it didn't really make any sense to look for anything else. And this mic, by the way, was less than $200 new. Yeah. So the key is to find something that sounds good, and more importantly, sounds good in your space. And sometimes the only way to do that is to test it. So what I like to recommend is look for places that either have a good return policy, like Guitar Center will let you return most of their products locally, Sweetwater has a decent return policy. Or if you can, borrow. And 
that's a good way to find out as well. So look for places nearby or friends that, that are either in the business or maybe are podcasters themselves or even in the music business. They may have a mic collection. Try and borrow from them. Get it in your space and see how it sounds before you decide if that's something you want to use forever. Absolutely. And so kind of going on a different tangent right now, one of the reasons I love Paul is that he is not afraid to try everything and seeing what sticks. <laughs> Absolutely. And, I mean, that's something that I uh, that I struggle with. And, um, like, we've both been doing our, our separate paths for, like, him for about one year, me for three. And... <laughs> When uh, when Paul and I became friends, like my own progress skyrocketed because he pushed me to to market myself to agencies more. I was doing um, like I didn't do that too much before because I didn't have a very reliable recording environment. I could record when I absolutely needed to, but I was like, oh, if I can't do twenty four hour turnaround, what like I'm just um, I, I didn't I didn't want to shoot myself in the foot. Because, I mean, you only get one good impression. But thanks to encouragement from him and a few other people, they're like, why aren't you working more? Um, Which is a great thing to hear, by the way. Yeah. I was like, well, I wish I knew. Maybe Uh, you could tell me. (laughs) Absolutely. And then, um, but that's that's why it's so important to really look at your progress again. Or like I said, have that ritual where you have this litmus test of where you want to be at. And you're like, all right, what mistakes am I making? How can I improve? Because that's the thing. It's like... People, going back to that newbie mentality, you have this idea that you either, like, you do or you don't, and once you're at a certain level, you stop improving. No. (laughs) um, You hear from some of the most uh, successful people in the business. One of my favorite voice actors is this anime, or this guy who transitioned from anime into American animation named Steve Bloom. One, he didn't start until he was 40 so like don't let age be a detractor and hey i started when i was 42 exactly exactly and um if it's something you're passionate about by all means give it a try and then um he didn't have formal acting training when he started but he certainly does it now he works with dialect coaches and acting coaches regularly and i know plenty of people who do so there's no there's no need to plateau ever really, you can and there are there are constant ways to improve and everyone I talk to who who I'm like yeah you've made it they're like how do I get better there's they don't sit on their laurels, so yeah uh, and you know the um the opposite of that is there is a point where I know you experience this where there's a phrase I like to use paralysis by analysis where you're constantly looking at your career and saying if only I had more training. If only I had a better microphone, if only I had a better space, there's a point where you have to just get off your duff and get out there and market yourself. Now, the caveat being, you have to be ready. And the way to do that is to get feedback from respected peers, coaches, and industry pros that can tell you, one, if your space is ready and your recording environment is ready. And there's the the engineers out there like George Widham or, or Cliff Zellman and Dan Leonard that can give you that sort of seal of approval that, yes, your recording space is is ready. But then you have to have honest feedback from people that you know but will be honest with you. Yeah. So not your mom, for instance. (laughs) Oh, you sound great, honey. um, (laughs) Exactly. Yeah, and that's a great point. And sometimes if you've built up a relationship with these people, it will be free. But if you're just really just you're new to the business, you might have to pay for that feedback, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. Um. That's another thing is like, why do I have to pay for somebody's opinion? I was like, well, it, it's a small investment now, which could have a large re- return later. So, and, and could determine the course of your career. And we're, like we were saying before, we're such bad judges of our own, uh, or like we're our own worst critics. Because, um, <laughs> or best, depending on if you're like, I just made this demo. But, <laughs> like, but the point is, is like, we are not the best um like, we are not the best critics of our progress in our talent. So No, both positively and negatively. Absolutely. I personally thought my demo sucked when it was produced. I heard it the, for the first time on my iPhone. I was playing it for my family. And my wife looked at me and said, you don't like it, do you? I can see it in your face. <laughs> and I said, no, I don't. So, But I persevered. I sent it out to several people. And 
within th- two months of it being out, I was landed with four regional agents. So it wasn't as bad as I thought it was for sure. Mm. And, it, and it's funny that you mentioned that because like I had had my demos for about two years, which some people recommend that like, oh, you might want to update them for various reasons. One, you might be like your talent has improved Two, like your spots might not be as relevant or up to date um, as they're advertising Etzel. Probably yeah. <laughs> two for a refresh. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and uh, so I was like looking into getting a new one. And then that's when we became friends and you started pushing me to to market it to talent agencies. First couple of agencies I sent it to, like, all right, you're on our, our roster. We love it. And I'm like, where? <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, that was a very similar experience to what I had. And so, like you said, we're, we're our own best and worst judges of our own character. And uh, but that's another uh, going back to what you were talking about. I love uh, like I said, you tried it with a whole bunch of gear. Some people might be scared because it can, you can spend a lot of money, but I mean, you were really smart about it. Like you didn't like, I don't feel like you bought any extremely expensive microphones. The fact that you were able to turn them around so quickly, you didn't take that much of a hit to your wallet, right? No, sometimes I even made money on, on transactions. Yeah. My, uh, latest, my latest fiasco with the upgrading of my space actually turned a nice profit on that <laughs> yeah that's one uh, and like i said that's not uh that's it's not just pertaining to your gear but it's like your whole approach to your your vo career like i've seen you um i've seen you do it with uh your marketing efforts reaching out to this guy will reach out to anyone and any everyone who he thinks might be interested in his services which is what you should do and because you don't like you you're only gonna get if you're lucky, like a 10% return on your on your output. Like if you reach out to 100 people, you might hear back from 10 and you might get one job from five and you might get... And that's every... if you're talented. Yeah, and that's if you're talented. <laughs> Some of the best, the best voices in the business, that's still their booking rate. Yeah, 15 to 20%. Like... <laughs> that's a good point, actually. So if you're just starting out and you're auditioning, auditioning and, and not getting any response... I would not necessarily give up, maybe, yeah. but find out some feedback first. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, like, that's the thing is, like, at some point, it's always great to sort of check in and figure out why you're not booking. So this may be a good time to throw out um, our contact information. If anybody wants to ask for help, I know I'm willing to help out as long as people are respectful of time and, and effort. So for me, um, I'm on Facebook, just Sean Daly, S E A N. D A E L E Y. And um, if you want to friend me, just be like, hey, Sean, I heard your podcast, liked what you had to say. Um, I had a few questions, if you don't mind. And, I'm, and I won't, like, especially if you're so polite and use my script. So, <laughs> <laughs> so write that down. Yeah. And, and yeah, what any other you? information you want to give out? Um, you can find my website at dailyvo.com. So that's daily as in every day because nobody spells my name right. And, um, and then we, we can talk about branding and stuff like that in another time. But yeah, so my website's up at dailyvo.com. It's also got ways to get a hold of me via email or Skype. And um, and you can hear my demos and hire me if you wish. <laughs> there you go. And my website is www.paulstefano.com. Since you're probably only listening to this, I'll spell it. P-A-U-L-S-T-E-F like Fred. A N like Nancy O dot com. And you can follow me at Paul Stefano on Twitter. My Twitter is linked to everything, so that's probably the easiest way to find me. So that's it, everybody, for the inaugural. John, you want to say it your way? <laughs> for the inaugural version of the VO Meter podcast. And thanks for joining us. We hope to do this as often as possible. Leave us a comment if you have any that you want to talk about, either positive or negative, and listen up for the next one. And so, yeah, we really invite you guys to to listen in. And if you have questions, if you if you want to talk about gear, if you want to talk about self marketing efforts, anything like that, we are a very fledgling podcast, and we would love your feedback. And uh, we're we're looking for ideas for more content. So go ahead and write us at the contact information that we gave you before, and we would be happy to answer your questions and maybe even have you on if you um, if that's a thing that we can figure out the technical requirements for. Yeah, but, great idea. Um, so thanks a lot for listening to us, everybody. This was a lot of fun, and I hope to be doing a lot more soon. 
Thanks for listening to the VO Meter, measuring your VO progress. To follow along, visit http colon slash slash vometer.podbean.com slash feed. We'll see you next time on the VO Meter.